Hello everybody, I'm Conquering History Games and welcome back to part three of my FOP campaign here in Hearts of Iron 4, uh, Moerike. So let's talk about a general here, let's talk about Mock Ogier. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Military career, well first off was born in 1908 in Bordeaux, France. Military career, Marc Augier was an enthusiastic alpinist before the outbreak of the Weltkrieg, in which he served in the south, uh, southern western front near the Swiss border. With the French syndicalist revolution in full swing, Augier decided to leave towards Argentina as his primitivist views classed, clashed with the local syndicalist leaders. He has since then helped the FOPS forces with his experience as a soldier and mountaineer, quickly turning him into a celebrity and respected member of the military staff. Important notes, known to be in combat, uh, contact with Jacques Doriot, but he has so far refused to return to France, where he thinks his primitivist views will still clash with those of his fellow revolutionaries, aligned with Ugarte's fashion. So Marc Aguirre is uh, an interesting dude, um, was anti-capitalist in real life, but uh, later on became full-blown um, fascist, <clears throat> served as a part of the French Waffen SS in World War II. I'm talking about in our own timeline right now. Um, so he was actually ended up being really disappointed while he was uh, a member of the SS because he thought that the SS, because you know they were part of the Nazi party, the National Socialist Party, thought we were going to be a little bit more socialist uh, than they ended up being. But they weren't. Uh, so, you know, the Nazis lose World War II, and where does he flee? To Argentina, which is why I think the developers of Kaiserreich put him down here. I don't know that for sure, but I think it's probably supposed to be like a funny irony, because in real life, he did go to Argentina, and he paid his way by publishing a book under, the, under a pseudonym. Um, and then when he ended up in Argentina, he was an advisor to Juan Perot and became a part of the Argentinian army, where he became a lieutenant colonel, and also taught Eva Perón how to ski. Uh, so let's get let's get back to the game, though. Uh, so yeah, the steel refining we'll do here in a bit. I like how we get some of the manpower back when these events are done, but not all of it, implying that people died working on these things. Uh, East Turkey, yep, yeah, China's really blowing up now. Okay, we've diverted the funds in time for the military autarky. With a steady stream of guns being produced by Patagonian hands for our war effort, we will be better prepared to defend ourselves than ever before. Excellent. Um... I don't know. Build a factory. No, it's going to take forever. Uh, cancel that. Do we need to trade for any more steel? I guess we should do something. I, like, whatever. Yeah, even this. Even a building an infrastructure, that's not going to be done until December 37, so who cares? Yeah, we're, we're not going to do the, um, <clears throat> the other civilian factory. We'll just do autarky, and then we're going to bypass the Industrial Revolution. We can uh, get, like, a couple of things done in that time. Call for Chilean volunteers. We're going to definitely need those. I think we'll encourage, just encourage the unwilling a little bit. Oh, that's just a flat 18,000, though, if we come over here. Women at arms. <clears throat> These men's covered mountains are home now for me. Why can't I do this? Okay, I need the manpower. Got to wait for it up here. Wait for it. Don't. I got. I gotta like pause it right at the moment. Yep. Ready, 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 ready. Not blinking. Ah! I blinked. Yep. Fuck. <laughs> All right. We'll try it again next week. I'm trying. To, I'm trying to get it right as it hits the six hundred. Wait for it. There! Got it. <laughs> Time for steel refining to expand. That's how you do it, boys and girls. <laughs> or you could just slow it down to maybe one speed and so it's not actually difficult like that. Uh, oh yeah, we still have Hendoff here in charge. No, 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 no. We're going to do the Bolsheviks for fun. So, Chuikov. Come over here. All right, we're not long. We're no longer getting the effects of the survey, so the manpower is not going to go up anymore, which is what makes it all the more important that we got to do some of this other stuff. 
I think we'll... Oh, Jack Reed won. Good for him. I think we'll go ahead and rally the workers. 18,000. It's a nice big flat number. Uh, it takes the same amount of time. Yeah, the FOPS cause is just. Workers of the world should be would be wise to see this. We'll help them reach our lines so they can help us overthrow the re regime that dare to press them. So that'll give us a nice big flat amount of manpower and we can go from there. Uh, let's keep dumping into the uh, infantry equipment for right now because right, we're just going to need to fill the front lines. That's the most important thing. I like that we're getting some army experience. That's going to be very useful later. Let's also get that. Okay. <clears throat> so uh let's duplicate that or no how about we duplicate create an empty unit all right let's start setting up where's the cavalry here they are i'm dumb there we go that's all i could do for right now uh there we go cavalry brigades ouch we're gonna call this just uh Patagonian Riders. <clears throat> Fantastic. Okay, so we can't do that just yet. But we're going to be able to have up to 17 divisions. I don't think there's any chance that we uh, are able going to be going to be able to pull that off. Actually, um, <clears throat> these riders are actually already better than the militia. I think. Like if we were to compare, like yeah, soft attack, organization, HP. Oh, uh, no, the militia's got a little bit better HP. But the speed is better. Okay, so tell you what. Can we convert these over? Ooh, that costs us manpower, though. Republican victory in Brazil. Vargas is in charge with the short hair. Okay, so 16 more days on the steel refinery, so this will be ready, so then we can go immediately into the Patagonian resource exploitation being completed. Good. Good, 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 good. <clears throat> so, don't think we have to do the women at arms, but let's go ahead and get those volunteers. Many of our comrades across the Andes are eager to spread the revolution and fight for their country. They are unable to enlist and fight in the Chilean army. We need to get to the message to as many of them as possible that there's a ration, a rifle, and an opportunity to spread the revolution on our side of the border. If they can't join the Chilean army, you got to kind of wonder what's wrong with them, though. <laughs> Uh, do we want to improve the workers' conditions? No, no. The stability is just up and down, up and down enough already. We're, we'll just leave it be. <clears throat> okay, here we go. Uh, oil. Oh, we haven't done oil extraction. Well, how do we do that? How do, how do we do the oil? <laughs> I don't even know. What the hell? Hmm. Well, that's awkward. I, I forgot to look at that. The Italian government has fallen. Council consisting of aristocrats, the Duke of Lombardy has suspended elections and declared the restoration of the Italian Federation in full effect! Huh. Okay. Let's call for some European manpower. I just want to see what kind of fun is going to happen with, you know, getting the others out here. <clears throat> definitely get that cap up even though we're nowhere near hitting it Chile sends volunteers they've sent us volunteers to help in the upcoming war their forces will be uh, appreciated greatly okay we cannot switch them over though Norway has joined third international that's gonna get tricky when Sweden attacks them I think Especially if we okay, there we go. The left KMT's dead. Guangdong has declared war on the Zhangxi clique. Okay, so these two are having their little their little war within a war. There's a Megumin. And let's see who we got in charge up here. Ah, yeah. Ma Click has already got uh, Ryuko Matoi in charge. Hmm. Yeah, I just don't understand what's the point of this, like, other than for, I guess you could say, well, it is free. 
You know what? For role playing, we're gonna do this. Let's get developing. Why not? It's not like we need a lot of political power right now. We'll be short on it later, though. The Commune of France has sent us men and equipment. We're gonna get 10 political power, 5,000 manpower, 500 units of rifles. Uh, the Brothers in Arms have seen fit to send us not only a large amount of men, but a significant shipment of arms. So has Norway. Nice. As has Italy. As has Britain. Awesome. Communitively, tens of thousands are helping us now. Division recovery rate, mass recruitment scheme. Uh, I think mass recruitment's definitely the way to go. 5% recruitable population factor. Flat. I don't know if that goes away later. But uh, it's pretty damn good. Okay. <clears throat> so I'm gonna, let's see, is this all disappearing right away? No, they're not. That's beautiful. Ooh, they're going away a little, going away a little. Okay. So, let's see how many of these we can make. Whoops, not what I meant to do. Not many, not many at all. Still, every bit will help. We're already in 37, we're running short on time. Okay, it looks like Argentina doesn't have their border with us covered, but that also could mean that they're going to press hard against um, Chile. And then, you know, who knows what's going to happen with Paraguay and Bolivia. I don't think that those interventions are in the war are necessarily guaranteed. <clears throat> We're going to do it. We're going to get Augier. Even though, yeah, because if we're going to get 5% recruitable population down here soon, we don't need the others. There's a conscription crisis in Quebec. Royalist Siam is one. Hmm. Royalist victory in Siam, yeah. And then who shall win between Nej and Jabal Shamar? What's this? The Uruguayan-born writer Horacio Silvester Quiroga Forza, uh, Forteza has passed away in the Hospital de Clinique de José de San Marín Martín. While he had been diagnosed with a very advanced case of prostate cancer, his death has still comes as a shock for the Argentinian... For Argentinian... That should say Argentinian. Uh, literary scene as he chose to commit suicide before the disease could advance any further. While the Sociedad Argentina de Escritores Sade, or Sad prepares his funeral arrangements. Many of his loyal fans are writing newspaper articles in commemoration of his memory as one of the region's greatest horror and tragedy writers, with books such as Cuentos de Ar Amor, de Locura y de Muerte, having now become classics of Argentine literature. Sad in for such a brilliant writer. Whoop. What's happening? Okay, I think got, got, got a little laggy there at midnight. Um... Oh, goodness. Stand off in America. Oh, boy. Here we freaking go, people. <clears throat> so, let's keep an eye for the instant that the war begins. Obviously, we'll be uh, helping out the combined syndicates because, you know, fellow fellow members of the Internationale, or at least potential members. In order to make up the difference in manpower, we need to bring as many people as possible into our ranks. We'll set up recruitment offices across our revolutionary state and send out officers throughout the countryside to encourage people to volunteer for our cause. While the haste, hasted efforts may degrade our army's quality slightly, it'll effectively solve our manpower crisis. So this will hurt stability, but you know, stability's been bad. It's Kaiserreich, people. You know, that's how it is. Um... <clears throat> Okay, so we're now starting to get a little shorter. Oh no, we're not going to be able to do the, uh, damn it. I Here I was saying, save up the 100, save up the 100. We can't send an attache now. What's this? Victory on the Rio Negro. The northern government now demands that we withdraw from the river after recent border tensions escalated between forces of the Argentine army and the FOP militias. Even though we may not have gained any territorial concessions in the struggle, the action has been a great boost to our morales or people realize the enemy is not prepared for a full invasion. This will help with our war support. Awesome. But, shit. This is bad. I'm wondering if after this I should just not take... Well, it's going to take... It it, <clears throat> it it takes... Doesn't it like take a couple of months now before everybody in America goes to war? So what we might do is let's do the mass recruitment scheme and then we're going to not take any focuses for a little bit. That way we can send an attache as soon as possible. 
It's I think it's definitely one of the best things. Like, because you don't get a theorist in um, the Unchin click just to recognize Feng Tian, huh? Um, fair, because the the Ching did acknowledge uh, the Nanjing click. So now they're just getting theirs back. Um, crap. Yeah, yeah. So because you know you don't get a theorist when you play Kaiserreich, so you got to use the attaches. And the Civil Wars are a damn good place to do it. The American and Spanish ones, that is. And so it begins. Oh my gosh. Ah, I screwed up so bad. Damn it. So mad at myself right now. Okay, we got radio. Oh, radio. Tell me everything you know. <sighs> no. Dispersed industry, so we could just straight up be making more of these. There we go. Mass recruitment scheme's done. That's it. No more. No, no focuses. No focuses for a little bit. So we're getting 1.20 a day. It's still going to take us a couple of months. What's going to happen in the Northeast here? I think it might actually be good for the CSA. If, is Canada not going to grab England? New England? Our British comrades have confirmed their readiness to host the Second International Congress in London. It's time for the Patagonian Workers Front to confirm its participation. Of course we'll go. Uh, oh, this is going to be extremely good for the CSA if they can grab New England. Of course, resistance is always an issue, but... Into the manpower crisis. Oh, this will give me 50 political power, though, in 14 days. Let's do that. Okay, okay. <clears throat> Uh, bueno, bueno. Desperate times have indeed called for desperate measures, but thanks to our efforts, we now boast a force that can stand up to the oppressors of the North. When the foe comes to try and take our freedom away, we shall finally, we'll, we're finally ready to fight them with a fully manned revolutionary army. Mm. Okay. Nope, we're not going to have enough time to get to pocket defense. I would have had to do this early, because that, that that would have been amazing. Uh, maybe grand battle plan? That's not going to help in the war, though. That'll help later, but I don't think we need that now. There it is. The 1937 Spartacade. What a glorious day for the working man. Fortify the border. Nah, don't need to do that. Improvised weaponry. Lowest production cost, but also reliability. Let's not do that. Infiltrating the north. Damage to garrisons. That's fun and all, but... Um, this allows to take decisions before the war to sabotage northern infrastructure and prevent strategic redeployments. Really? Fascinating. I don't know what triggers the war, actually. Don't they have to do it? Mobilize the reserves. Reintegrate Patagonia. No, here we go. Strike now. So... Buenos Aires will get a land fort. Let's check to see if they've done that yet. Yes, they have. Okay, so for all we know, as soon as this is done, they're going to go for strike now. And then, then, then when you do that, like you only got a week. Inferior enemy your enemy. That's definitely not true. That's just because uh, not everybody's on the border. That's why it's saying that. Okay, but yeah, let's just keep <clears throat> keep keep doing this. Okay. Oh, this is great. This is so good for the CSA. And the American Union State went west instead of north. I always say, like, the American Union State in my opinion, from what I've seen, from what I've experienced over the years, I know that they always are, like, tweaking it a bit. But if the American Union State's always in the best position to win early if they rush north. But they didn't. They went west. They screwed up. And now the CSA is looking really, really good. But they don't have Minnesota, admittedly. Oh, why you join the co-prosperity sphere? How about that? Okay, yeah, Federalists are gonna eat it out here in Washington. Oh gosh, did you hear that? As you got close, the ah, screaming and whatnot. Come on, come on, come on. What is this <clears throat> outcome? We got a, f a few medals in the a few medals in the events, but not enough for our team to be a winner. Neither good nor bad. Inauguration of the Second Congress by Comrade Eric Blair. Uh, Second International is happening. 
obviously a big event, but we're going to make a splash at the party when we agree to send an attache. Military intelligence data sharing. 20% of their army experience will be gained by us. War support plus 10%. They will not accept. Why not? Bullshit. They declined. Do we seriously... Are we going to have to like manually improve relations? You know what? Let's try again after the Congress. Alright. In the meantime, I guess, let's... Uh, no, that's going to cost me 10 political power points. Let's wait until we got 110. And then we're going to take a focus again. The end of the Spartacade. Too bad it ended. Man, this is some bullshit. Okay. Organize the troops, standardize the tactics. Um, infiltrate the north. Uh, none of these are amazing. Uh, you know, organization's always good. What is this? Justification. Oh, that's it. They've started. We got a week. All right. Well, okay then. <laughs> What's going on with the Second International Congress? Shouldn't there be events or something? And this is bullshit. Okay. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to manually start improving relations. I guess, even though this is going to do virtually... Yeah, it's going to basically take away how much political power I get a day. <clears throat> Alright, time to slow it down, people. Union of Britain wants to send help. Thank you very much. You guys are swell. Uh, the decentralized nature... No, let's not take that, because I need to take another land doctrine first. Um, let's... Request rifles, or no, we're actually a little short still. Encourage the unwilling, get a little more manpower right now. Okay, here we go. The war has begun. Pravda, pra, yeah, Pravda forces, forward! Yeah, we'll call this the, uh, Pravda school. Paraguay has declared war on Argentina, so that's good for us. The Chilean-Argentinian war. Tensions have been running high between the two regional powers for years now as the ideological differences drove the nations further and further apart. Support by Chile for the FOP in Patagonia and the incapacity of Argentina to quell the rebellion have finally come to blows as a joint offensive by the Argentinian army and the Armada was met with heavier resistance on the Rio Negro, with Chilean forces opening fire on the advancing Argentinian troops. We got this. We have got this, people. Don't worry about it. Oh, that's great. Hey, nice. They're, they speak in Spanish. Love it. You know what? Change one of these over. Yeah, we need those Patagonian riders. Yeah, speed is the key, except for the Communist Expeditionary Force, because they've got, like, armored cars and stuff, so they could do some good work. Union of Britain? Oh, that's a lot of guns they want to give me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You guys are terrific. I don't care what anyone says about you. <laughs> oh, pin pinch them. Okay, make sure you're being aggressive, Communist Expeditionary Force. Fourth Balkan War has begun. No! Bad move! You want to come over here, and then the other one of you... Uh, get coming up here. Alright, Chile doesn't seem to be collapsing immediately, so that's nice. Hmm, we could do war propaganda, but hopefully the war doesn't last that long. Yeah, everybody's lend leasing me. Oh, so you'll lend lease me, but I can't send an attache? Get out of my face, Jack. OK, 
Okay. No, what are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? Go up to Buenos Aires. By the way, do we have cores on all this stuff? Or... No, that's we we just have claims on it. Oh, no, wait. We have a core on Buenos Aires. That's cool. But, yeah, most... And here we go. Here comes the, uh... I don't know, the Pat the Patagonian bug. Uh, the, or whatever it is, this sickness that, that happens every time you advance in this war. You get the splotchies. The Patagonian splotch. The Patagonian plague. There you go. Okay. No, 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 no. Leave it be, leave it be. Nice, we encircled a mountain division over there. Oh, they've got a light tank unit here. Like to see that. Yes, yes, let's encircle that bad boy. Oh, it looks like Bolivia did get involved, but only against Paraguay. So, not a super duper huge deal. Ah, damn it. They were there, they were waiting for us up there. It's okay. Ain't no thing. Mm. Tensions are mounting between the anarchists and the communists. <clears throat> A few anarchist officers have reported in today that they have been harassed constantly by some officers of the communist faction. However, when interrogated, the communist officers claimed the anarchists were the ones harassing them and presented plenty of evidence and witnesses. While we have separated their platoons for now, this is not an isolated incident. And we have received other reports across the front line of each side seemingly trying to hinder the other when not in combat. We will have to keep an eye out. Okay. Uh, let's, yeah, let's come up here to San Luis and Mendoza. Dang it, they keep they keep pinning this down, little bastards. So the volunteers have arrived, that's cool. <clears throat> oh bye. Dang it, we need to fuck. We need to cut off Buenos Aires from the rest of Argentina. That's when things will really that's when we'll really start having some fun. There goes the Spanish Civil War. I guess if push comes to shove, I could send my volunteers out there instead, or my attache out there. Oh, CSA is in such a good position. That's awesome. That's really great. How's the, how's the Pacific doing though? Yeah, the Pacific's not really advancing west as fast as it could be. I think the American Union State and them are gonna grind up against each other too much. Yeah. Good, good stuff. Whoa! Friendly fire after a skirmish. Tragedy has struck today as a battalion of our frontline troops clashed with another one of our own. Well, the gunfire was rather short because they were able to quickly realize they were all fighting on the same side when noticing their ragged uniforms and outdated rifles. The small skirmish left five dead soldiers and about a dozen wounded. Unsurprisingly, one of the battalions is led by an officer affiliated to the Communist Party, and the other by a well-known anarchist. While an investigation by both sides is being carried out to figure out which is the guilty party for such a mishap, it's clear that both sides are pointing fingers at each other, and an attempt at an objective investigation is becoming harder by the day. With the families of the dead asking for justice to be delivered, the chairman will need to take a decision on the matter. Uh, we can say anarchist is at fault and shall be removed, communist officer is at fault and shall be removed, or remove both, we can't play favorites. Ah, this all costs me political power! So because, well, no, yeah, I said that we wouldn't do something that does nothing. So let's uh, get the random number generator. Oh, wait, no, I think I still have it open in a tab here. So one or two, generate, and we got two. The communist officer is at fault and shall be removed. So the totalists get less popular, even though we've got three. <laughs> See, that definitely is probably not something I would have done for role-playing or for... Or whatever. Well, I guess this is a role play in its own way, but um, you know what I'm saying. It's just like we've got three communist generals leading this offensive. Uh, God, can we just freaking get out of here already? This damn mountain division is clogging up three whole divisions of my offensive. I hate it, hate it, hate it. 
sucks! No, 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 no. Let them go, let them go. And you guys come here to San Juan. We can pocket this entire area. The Savoyard crisis has been resolved and a victory for the French government. This freaking mountaineer! Is he dead yet? Oh my god, I cannot believe he's he's just 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 single-handedly botching this whole offensive. Anarchist expropriate a farmstead. With our pushes being received rather apathetically by the majority of the rural population, we are facing several issues in the occupied territories that may change the situation for the worse. Today, an anarchist column has broken into a farmstead, tied up its inhabitants, and robbed them blind. Farmstead break-ins and robberies are no, no novelty in the Argentinian countryside, but and even some of the original members of the Patagonic strikes, like Alfredo Fonte, were known homestead robbers. However, while the practice may not be uncommon, it damages our reputation with the civilian populace, which may start to see us as nothing more than an outgrown gang of thieves. We may have to take measures if we wish to keep the rural population open to the idea of our takeover. So we can imprison them, which will increase totalism. We can say we're here to free them, not to rob them, compensate the family. This will increase the radical socialism. Or they probably deserved it, which increases syndicalism. Okay. Ouch, minus 50. Well, we're going to random number generate it. All right, generate, and we got three. They probably deserved it. Lowers stability and war support, but gains us in syndicalism. The communists complain. Libor, liboro, li, Liborio Justo has come to Puerto Madryn from the front line today to complain personally about the blatant favoritism to the anarchists in the front lines, citing several incidents that have happened during and after the fighting where our government has done little or nothing at all. Given the recent instances of fighting on the front line between the two, this protest does not come as a surprise. And while Soto has given him all the assurances that he can give as a fellow revolutionary advocate, this unfortunately means that the discipline in our forces may be weaker than we thought. Perhaps it was a supply error? So stability and war support goes down more. Kind of war support I usually don't care that much about, but when... Um... Okay, let me try something else here. Uh, but when you know we, we need mobilizing is done as fast as possible, it does become a problem. Uh... I don't know. What are we going to do here? I think we're going to stop for a bit. Um, so we can get our political power up. And then try to send that attache. What's going on here? What are you, what are you just standing there? Keep them occupied. While well, this guy goes around. Come on, no none! Oh, damn it. Yeah. See, and cutting that off doesn't really, really help because the um, the uh, the port. Shoot. Nope, they got a division over there too. Damn it all! How many divisions did they crank out? They they might have as many as twenty three now. This is bullshit. We gotta get an encirclement somewhere. Maybe I should just hook in like this. So it won't be as big as an encirclement, but it'll kill our, you know, oppressors. I was about to say Argentinians, but we are really Argentinians. The Equan revolt has begun. Oh, Jabal Shamar won! Wow! <coughs> Excuse me. Wow, this is not a portrait you'll see often. Good for Jamal. Jabal, excuse me. Oh, shoot, I just realized this episode's gone on long. Okay, so that's it for today. Thank you very much for joining me. In the next episode, we'll keep trying to uh, defeat Argentina. <sighs> Dang it, they've got German volunteers that are uh, with panzers that are holding on to Buenos Aires right now. That's a serious problem. God, is, it, is all the divisions on my front... Shouldn't Paraguay and Chile start? I don't know, but I'll see y'all next time. I'm Conquering History Games. Bye.